but it's hard to let go of what you've been holding on to for so long, even if it's not working anymore. It's really hard to let go. It's like, I beg you, see it differently. I beg you to let go. It's not normal. It's just old. It's time to drop it and move forward. You may be a product of your past, but you don't have to be a prisoner of your past. Everything that's inflexible and everything that's not ready, and everything that's backwards and everything that's negative, and everything that's carnal and everything that's holding me back, I refuse to take it over into another year and waste another new year with an old mind. The devil is a lie. Just because you're used to it doesn't make it normal. Some of you, you are taking too much time trying to convince people to love you that do not matter. Tolerating and trying to get people engaged that don't matter, that don't care, that are never ever going to help you get into your destiny. I came to preach to somebody who everybody else might have given up on you and life might not be where you want it to be and you might not have been what you could have been, but it's not too late to become who you are. See, many things we don't do because of fact we want people to like us. There's some necessary losses in life. When you decide acting in your best interest, you're going to lose some friends. Everybody's not going to approve of you. There's some people that won't like you. Who do you think you are? You're arrogant. What do you think you can do? You're selfish. Thanks, I got that. Poor thinking habits keeps most people poor, not poor working habits. Most people work hard, but they don't think hard. The mind is like a factory, a mental factory, and whatever you think about all day long pours ingredients into this mental factory, and that's what builds the economic, social, financial fabric of your life. As you think, so you become. program your mind because all that you will do or not do, have or not have, accomplish or not accomplish will be a direct derivative of what's going on inside of your mind. So if you don't get clear thinking on an issue, you won't be able to develop in that area. Look at somebody say it's time for a change. Well, well, what stops us? What stops us from making the changes that we need in our behavior, in our situation? It's, it's the mind. If you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. So if you're at a place in your life and you ain't happy with it, you have to change some things. But you have to make a conscientious decision that you're going to change. And it's not dependent on anybody else. It don't matter what your mama think. It don't matter what your co-workers think. It don't matter what your siblings think. It don't matter. This decision is yours and yours alone. People want to know how to stop the laziness and they want to know how to stop the procrastination. They have some idea in their head, some kind of a, a vision of what they want to do, but they don't know where to start. They don't know where to start it. You know, they don't know where to start. And so they say, hey, where do I start? And when's the best time to start? And I have a very simple answer for that. Here and now. God may be giving you more to work with than what you are working with at this time. You may have far more things that you can potentially do than what you're doing right now. That's why I don't like to hang with low thinking people because they'll make you underutilize what God has given you. You need somebody to challenge you that you could be doing more than what you're doing right now. You could have more than you have right now, and somebody's got to be bold enough to look you in the face and empower you to go into the enemy's camp and take back what he stole from you. For every time you have a plan, a dream, an aspiration, or a goal, 
Do you know what happens every time you have one of those? This thing comes along called life. Life is hard. It happens to everybody. Life has disappointments. It's got peaks and valleys. You're going to lose somebody you care about one day. That's a valley. Somebody going to close the plant you thought was going to stay open so you could retire. That's a valley. Somebody going to fire you for an unjust cause. That's a valley. Because it's life. You can stop thinking that life fitting to be easy because I got news for you. It ain't. And those problems you think you've got right now, when do problems really become problems? My problem becomes a real problem when I lose my perspective. My problem becomes a real problem when I give up and I just say, forget it. Your problem becomes a real problem when you start feeling sorry for yourself and have a pity party. Your problem becomes a real problem when you get bitter and you start blaming everybody else for your unhappiness. That's the real problem. Guys and gals, don't give up. Man, if, you're, if you get to the point where you're kind of weary and you're, you're going, I, I, I'm, I'm facing struggles at every turn, don't give up. You just need some faith, man. Faith don't make it easy. Faith makes it possible. We find ourselves announcing our standards to our relatives, our friends, our associates. We shout our beliefs and condemn those who believe any differently, but then we don't walk the talk. We end up acting in a way far different from the beliefs we've shouted. This is inconsistent. This leads to a loss of credibility among those who watch us. And more importantly, this leads to a loss of credibility within ourselves. The only thing worse than one who is inconsistent in applying their self-imposed disciplines is one who has never considered the need or the value of discipline at all. So what kind of courage do you have? Is yours sort of floating between depending on the situation? Or do you know the difference between right and wrong for your life? And you've made up your mind. Our mind is the control tower of our life. All of our decisions are there. And the truth is, whatever we are today is the result of what we've been thinking about all those years. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you don't like what's going on around you, maybe you should ask yourself the question, what am I thinking about? What do I think about myself? What do I think about other people? I want you to ponder these four questions. Here's the first one, and that's why. Why pay the price? Why work this hard? Why go this far? Why try to learn this much? Why try to do it all? Why try to see it all? Why try to have it all? Why study? Why put yourself out? Why try to take on this much responsibility? Why develop yourself to the full? Why try to become all that you can possibly become? Why try to earn as much as you can earn, share as much as you can share, develop every skill you possibly can, see every human you possibly can, go to every class you possibly can, touch everybody you possibly can? Why do that much? Why go that far? Why share that much? Why give that much away? Why try to see everything? Why try to do everything? Why try to become everything? That's a good question, why? And you're the only one personally that can answer that question for yourself. You've got to have your own list of whys. Work on your list of whys. One of the big thrusts for success is to come up with a strong enough why. In leadership training, here's what we learn. If the why is powerful, the how is easy. But if the why isn't strong, if your goals aren't powerful, if the vision isn't clear, the old prophet said, without a vision, we die. Without a vision, we perish. Without a dream, we're nothing. From the movie, The Professionals, from the movie, The Professionals, it said, we joined because we believed. We stayed because we were committed. We left because we were disillusioned, but we came back because we were lost. Without a dream, 
we are nothing. I'm asking you to sit down with your family and develop a dream strategy. I'm asking you to make a list of what, what you want. What kind of health do you want? What kind of skills do you want? What kind of income do you want? What kind of gifts do you wish to bestow? What kind of power would you like to have? What kind of influence would you like to have? I'm asking you to go home and work on the why. I'm asking you to have a vision. Now here's number two. Here's another good answer to why. It's the second question, why not? Why not see how much you can earn? Why not see how much you can learn? Why not see how many skills you can develop? Why not see what kind of person you can become? Why not see what kind of influence you can have? Why not see how many people you can rescue from oblivion? I want you to establish some of your goals. I want you to give thoughtful consideration to your goals. And why not? If a farm boy can wander out of Idaho and finally arrive at this extravaganza, why not you? If we've got good health for many, why not the rest? If it's happened for you, why not others? And why not you? I want you to take that personal. Why not? Why not? You've got to stay here till you go. I mean, what else are you gonna do? Why not see how much you can do, how far you can go? Now here's number three. Why not you? I wish I could say that to each of you individually, but it would take a couple of lifetimes to sit down and talk with each of you individually. But I would rather do that. I'd rather sit down and talk with you and your family with a fire burning in the living room than to be standing on this platform. That's my true desire. I'd love to talk to you and your children face to face. That's what I'd really like to do. I'd love to spend a couple of days with each of you personally and pour out my heart, my soul, what's going on in my head, what's going on with me, see if we couldn't connect and find something valuable. But time doesn't permit for us to have those intimate conversations and get to know each other that well. So I've got to do it from up here, but I want you to take it personal. And my personal question to you is why not you. You've got the brains. You can make decisions. You can study the plan. You can change your life. You can grow immensely in the next few years. You can make your dreams come true. You can build a financial wall around your family. Nothing can get through. You can become healthy. You can become powerful. Why not you? And I'm here to say that I'm ready to pledge my support to make your personal dreams come true. I asked the question, why not you? but I'm not gonna ask it and just walk away. I'm gonna ask it and walk with you. And now here's my last question. My very last question on the questions to ponder is why not now? There never was a better time. And what a time now for us to take this dream and not let it die. Take this dream and give it life. Take this dream and breathe into it your own personal spirit until finally it becomes a flame that burns around the whole world. Let's go do it now. What we think about is really what controls us. This is a control tower, that everything else is a result of how we think. And we can't control everybody else in control of all of our circumstances, but we are going to respond to circumstances in one way or the other. And so what you have to ask is this, what is it that determines what I think? This. This mind of yours controls everything else in your life. Are you satisfied with your life as it is? Are you? Is your life giving you what you want? If you had your life to live over again, could you have done more than what you've done thus far? When I ask audiences that, most people agree, yes, I could have done more. I know I could have done more. I've wasted a lot of valuable time. You're going to lose something, lose money. You can recapture that. Don't lose time. You can't get that back. But I think being grateful probably is number one. If you've got a job, you've got to be grateful. Say, this isn't the greatest job in the world. Even if it's a transitional job getting you where you want to go, you've got to be grateful. You don't have to love your job or be passionate about your job, just passionate about staying steady, working hard, learning skills, doing this job so well that the next one will be even better. And taking such good care of this opportunity, another one will present itself. What's next for me? After all of this, I don't think that things just happen. 
I believe that they happen just. We have a mindset. We don't want to be the same coming out of this. That you, you want some radical change. That this could be a major defining moment for you. A day that turns your life around. If you have an extreme desire to wish to be successful so you can accomplish all you wish to accomplish be as generous as you'd like to be be as strong as you'd like to be and i think if you say you have to find your passion people find that a little bit confusing where would i find it and what could i be passionate about i guess you could start with saying i'm passionate about providing unusual success for myself and for my family then i think the key is to let what you want to accomplish let that grow where at first this is as far as you can see, but if you'll do that, you can say, wow, maybe I could multiply by two, by three, and expand my vision, accomplish a lot more. It's not what happens that determines the major part of your future. It's not what happens. What happens, happens to us all. The key is what you do about it. It's not what happens, it's what you do about it. And he said, if you will start that process of change, do something different the next 90 days than you did the last 90 days, like picking up the books to read. Do something different like the new health disciplines, relationship with your family, whatever it is, doesn't matter how small it is. If you'll start doing different things with the same circumstances, since we cannot change the circumstances, but we can change ourselves. We can change what we do. Then he gave me another secret to success when he said, what you have at the moment, Mr. Rohn, you've attracted by the person you've become. What you have at the moment, you've attracted by the person you've become. A few little simple principles here. Once you understand these, it starts to explain so much. Now, sometimes it's a little tough to take, blaming yourself instead of the marketplace, taking responsibility instead of putting it off on someone else. Those, that transition sometimes is a, challenging mission and this one was a little tough for me he said mr Ron, you've got pennies in your pocket you've got nothing in the bank the creditors are calling you're behind on your promises and he says here's how that occurs you've attracted up until now you've attracted the things to you because of the person you've become now i said well how can i change all that he said very simple if you will change everything will change for you you don't have to change what's outside all you've got to change is what's inside. To have more, you simply have to become more. And then he said, don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Start working on yourself, making these personal changes. And he said, it'll all change for you. I got a telephone call five years ago. Company said, we're ready to expand internationally. We need some help. I was sort of semi-retired, looking for the next exotic beach. He said, no, no, Mr. Rohn, we've got a project for you. We're going to expand internationally. We could use your help. Next little while, we'll add a some millions to your fortune, make it worth your while. I said, okay. I thought later, isn't that interesting that they called me? My second thought was, of course they'd call me. Who else would they call? I mean, you know, I can get the job done. Now, how come, how come I got a telephone call worth millions? I had become valuable. Now I'm a farm boy from Idaho. I was raised in obscurity. One year of college and I thought I was thoroughly educated. Made all kinds of mistakes galore. At age 25, the creditors are calling me saying, hey, you told us the check was in the mail. I got pennies in my pocket. I got nothing in the bank. I'm behind on my promises. How come I get a telephone call five years ago and it's worth millions? I changed, I changed. I turned my life around. Is it possible to become worth millions speaking economically now there's a lot of values to become but let's just talk economics is it possible to become that valuable and the answer is of course of course now let me give you the secret show said here's the secret mr Rohn. learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job once i got that it turned my life around learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job he said, if you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. 
If you would have known me at age 25, you would have said, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. If you'd have known me, you'd have said that. I'm the guy, I don't mind coming a little bit early, staying a little bit late, I don't mind that. You'd have said, well, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. You say, well, how come he's got pennies in his pocket and nothing in the bank and behind on his promises? Well, I was a hard worker, but I was working hard on my job, not on my cell. I'm telling you, if you'll learn that simple little principle and start the process today, latest tomorrow, I'll give you tonight to think it over. And start this whole process of personal development, work on yourself, make yourself more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, you can so dynamically change your income and economics is the least of the values that you can start earning in terms of equity. If you'll start working harder on yourself than you do on your job. Work hard on yourself and develop the graces. I'm telling you, your whole life can explode into change. Promotions, no problem. Becoming more valuable to the company, I'm telling you, no problem. Money, no problem. Economics, no problem. Future, no problem. If you just go to work on the right thing, not get things out there to change. Don't try to change the seed. Don't change the soil. Don't change the sunshine. Don't change the rain. Don't change the mix of seasons. Let the miracle of everything that's available work for you and start working on the inside. Work on your philosophy, work on your attitude, work on your personality, work on your language, work on the gift of communication, work on all of your abilities. And if you'll start making those personal changes, I'm telling you, everything will change for you. Need a little pick-me-up today? Welcome to the new Fresh Motivation app, where you'll find daily motivation, daily quotes, listen to your favorite speeches in the background or with a black screen, so nothing interrupts your motivational moment, where you can create your personal profile, create playlists of your favorite speeches and quotes, add personal notes, and start setting goals. Fresh Motivation, the home of motivation. Get it now for free on Google Play. People are going to judge you. They're going to misunderstand you. They're going to gossip about you. But I, I encourage people to really be strong-willed to, to know that their opinions don't matter. Uh, and to me, that's something very different. There used to be a joke about football teams that lost every game. The coach would say, well, we built a lot of character this year, didn't we? As if character is something that you settle for when you haven't achieved what you really wanted. For some of us new to self-soothing, what is the core definition and what effect is it supposed to have on us? What is happening in our body? Okay. It hurts sometimes when you're in that dark place. I need you to hold on. I need you to hold on strong and don't give up. Make an impact in this world. Don't look at it as though it's something that you've got to do temporary. Although we know that life is short like the many people in this world, they didn't realize that the next day they was going to be diagnosed with a cancer. They thought that tomorrow was going to be waiting for them, and they did not wake up, but you are still living now. What do you have to do? How are you going to move forward? How are you going to proceed your life? Um, their opinions are not your problem. Some people are able to really rise above and beyond um, their circumstances, and there are some people that can't handle it, but that doesn't mean that they can't be great. They just have to approach it and deal with it the way that they feel uh, needed. No matter what is said or done, do not doubt your worth. Take us into your daily routines. How do you stay as disciplined as you are? Consistency is key, not only just in athletics or sports or what have you, but it's very key in, in, in every aspect of your life. And I think sports and outside of sports, business, just even in personal relationships or just established. Or as if character is something that automatically develops in you, as a result of adversity. I don't buy that. I don't think adversity by itself builds character. And I certainly don't think that success erodes it. You can build character by how you respond to what happens in your life, whether it's winning every game or losing every game, or getting rich or dealing with hard times. You build character out of certain qualities that you must create and diligently nurture within yourself. Just like you would plant and water a seed, 
you know, a rapport, a bond, even with family. Communication, consistency uh, is key with anything. If you can communicate and uh, know how and understand how to communicate with, you know, your peers, coaches, and, and be receptive to a constructive criticism, then I think you, you give yourself an opportunity to grow, um, not only as a person, but as an athlete at the same time, because there's there's always communication in, in everything that we do. And I think if there's a, a, a great, I guess, rapport or great lines of communication where it's harmonious and, uh, and I think being able to listen instead of being so quick to to respond or speak, um, then I think, you know, things will, you know, you'll see a lot of things a lot clearer. Or gather wood and build a campfire. You've got to look for those things in your heart and in your gut. You've got to chisel away in order to find them, just like chiseling away rock in order to create the sculpture that has previously existed only in your imagination. But the really amazing thing about character is that if you're sincerely committed to making yourself into the person you want to be, you'll not only create those qualities, you'll strengthen them and recreate them in abundance, even as you're drawing on them every day of your life. Like the burning bush in the biblical book of Exodus, the bush that burned, but it was not consumed by the flames. Character sustains itself and nurtures itself even as it's being put to work and tested and challenged. Life is not a game. Life is living. I say to you right now that you must make it. I say to you right now that you must tell excuses, fear and doubt that it has no place in your place of business. For this is your life that you are fighting for. This is your life that you are living for. Don't let anyone take away who you are and how true you are and what you matter in this world to so many other people. I need you to believe in every possibility that you have and understand that it is not over for you. And maybe you may be in a position where you feel that you are broken or you feeling that you're going to be broken. But I'm here to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, that you are built to last. I'm here to let you know that you don't have the right to complain anymore. I'm here to let you know that you've got to keep on living and living on strong. You had to experience some things that you did not understand. You had to experience some greatness. The actual neurochemistry of what's happening in your body, I don't know well enough to put it back, uh, to reiterate it. But I will say this. For sure, you have an element of serotonin in terms of how you feel about yourself. So you want to be re-anchoring yourself around a very anti-fragile idea. Shout out to Nassim Taleb. So fragile ideas of pride would be something like being smart, being right, being worthy, being good, being intelligent, anything where you can encounter somebody that's more than you. They are more worthy they are better or just even if it's yourself that you fail on something you're like oh my god like i could have done that so much better right so it could be you versus you it could be you versus somebody else prostate cancer conquerors to believe that i could do this it was hard never forget my son said daddy are you going to die why are you ask me that you're not going out much you're not the bubbly personality that i know you to be you're not talking much you're spending a lot of time in the room by yourself dad are you gonna surrender are you giving up? Are you going to let that, that doctor's opinion become your reality? Will my daddy see me graduate? Yes, yes, son. Yes, yes. I'm going to fight. No, no, I, I don't think it's my time yet. I'm going to see you graduate, but more than that, I've got some other things that I'm going to do with my life. And I thank you for asking me that. Um, but I must tell you that I'm scared. I'm scared. And um, I've never been in this situation before. It's been easy for me to talk to people and encourage people when they've had challenges in their lives, um, but it's me. And I don't feel less than a man in, in, in admitting this to you. Yes, I'm scared and I need some help. You had to experience some weaknesses. You had to experience things that no one could understand, but you are the one that has to be responsible to go through it. You were put on your back and you probably thought that you didn't have the ability to come back, but you did dawn. It's coming, the sun is gonna rise and you will see the light within you. Don't you give up on life because once your life is over, you can't come back, leave your mark, help. Someone lifts someone up when they down, be the strength for others when they're weak and maybe when you're at the weakest point in your life. But when you value yourself for being right, for instance, the number of times you're gonna be wrong is way too 
frequent to be a sustainable way to draw your self-esteem. But you must have self-esteem from something. So if you use something that's anti-fragile and you say, okay, I'm taking an anti-fragile approach to this. So I see myself as the learner. So the very thing that I value myself for is my willingness to face my inadequacies and get better. The very thing that makes me feel good about myself is not being right. It's not avoiding mistakes. It is not being perfect. It is in the face of the fact that I will make mistakes and that I am not perfect, that I keep going. I learn, I grow, I try again. I don't allow other people to stop me. I don't allow myself to stop me. I don't allow my failures to define me, okay? Now we've got this anti-fragile framework. Now, as we think of ourselves like that, we're getting that serotonin boost, okay? We're feeling better about ourselves. We have a, a better vision of what the future can be. The future can be better. See, life is hard, and, and there are some moments in life when you're going to need some help. You're going to need somebody to speak to you. You're going to need somebody to say something to you. I have a friend of mine, Willie Jolly, who's a motivational speaker. He said a setback is a setup for a comeback. I had to listen to Willie's tapes. I have another friend, Kevin Brace, who's a, who's a speaker. He said, Les, come on, man, you can do this. You can make this happen. You can hit a home run. It's a done deal. You are Les Brown. That cancer's got to get out of your body. I said, talk to me, Kevin. Talk to me. That's what I need to hear. I needed to hear those words. I don't care who you are. Many people won't allow themselves to ask for help because of, of pride. Pride cometh before fall. Because of ego. Ego means edging God out. No, ask for help. Not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong. And ask for help and don't stop until you get it. I'm here because a lot of people helped me. I'm here because a lot of people believed in me. Someone will lift you up. Because we all struggle, no one is immune to it. It is necessary that you struggle, it is necessary that you feel alone, it is necessary that you have to continue to go forward, nothing can stop this. Because that light has already been there, that light is embedded in you, that light exists in you. What about the other people out here who can't walk? What about the people out there who can't talk? What about the people out there that are suffering from diseases, that cannot be cared for? What about you? What are you going to do about the life you have? How are you going to live? How far are you going to go? Run with greatness, run with a full heart. I'm telling you, it ain't nothing as dangerous as somebody who's making a comeback. You haven't had a fight till you get in the ring with somebody who's making a comeback. You haven't been through hell till you run up and punch somebody who ain't got nothing to do. Slap somebody and say, nowhere to go but up. Already lost everything. Already been through trouble. Already been embarrassed. Already been humiliated. Already been talked about. Already been laughed at. Already been betrayed. Already had my feelings hurt. Tell somebody, said, nowhere to go but up. You can start to make a new stretch today. You can sign up for some new classes today. You can start engaging in constructive thinking today. You can make some life-changing decisions today. So you don't ever have to be the same again, only by choice. And while you wait for prices to come down, I would go to work immediately and quickly on the refinement of your own thinking and the refinement of your own disciplines and watch how quickly the equity of that starts to grow. Now this is called dealing in straight talk. Let's go do it. What's the first thing they say when you get on an airplane before they take off? Fasten your seatbelt. Why? Because you will experience some turbulence before you reach a comfortable altitude. The only way to get unstuck is that you need something stronger, something greater, pulling the thing that is stuck. Because there's some people today that you're single and you feel like you're stuck. You feel like you're at a halt. You don't feel like you can progress in life. You don't have to be popular to be powerful. I ended up going to dinner with, becoming friends with, eating with, fellowshipping with people who started out hating me. I had the capacity to withstand their hatred and the capacity to embrace their friendship. I understood that time 
defines you. Some people will understand you later. I didn't have the help I needed. I didn't have the money to do what I was doing. I didn't know anybody. But I knew one thing. I'm not in this thing by myself. It's not about perfection, it's about progression. But some of you right now, you've got it in your mind. The only way I can progress is if I get a partner. Oh, but friend, you need something bigger than a partner to pull you out of this season where you feel like you're stuck. Guess what you need? You don't need a partner, you need a God-given purpose. You need something stronger to pull you from the place where you feel like you're stuck. Life situations is to use the illustration of the seasons. Number one, you cannot change the seasons until you get your own planet. All of this has been set in motion. But here's the next piece of information. You can change yourself. You can't change the seasons, but you can change yourself. Life and business is like the changing seasons. Frank Sinatra saying, life is like the seasons. First, learn how to survive the winter. Speaking of life in its simplest aspect, the first key to learn in your life on the spinning planet is to learn how to survive. Now there's all kinds of winters, right? The winter of the calendar, right? The winter of the actual season. But then there's financial winters and social winters, personal winters. But we understand those because we've all been through them. Now here's the key on the winters. Some are long and some are short. Some are easy and some are tough. But they always come right after harvest, right after fall, autumn. So we cannot rearrange the coming of the winters. But here's what we could do. Get stronger, wiser, and better so that we can survive better. And our life will be less eroded by learning to handle the next winter. The next winter of a divorce, the next winter of an illness, the next winter of a death in the family, the next winter of a loss financially, the next winter of a, a crisis of whatever kind, to be better equipped. So here's the key to learn the season so that you can approach it all in a very intelligent way. So you must think negative when it's possible. You must think winter when it's summer. Here's some of the best advice. It comes from classic tradition. A great story says, don't build your house on the sand in the summer. And I think we live in a world that doesn't know the difference between the public moments and the private moments. I think we're increasingly becoming, and this is just my old man rant, so please let me do it right now, because like I said, I'm a parent now, and I'm so scared for my kids who are growing up in a world where now they're growing up publicly. Everybody has their own broadcast journalism degree called Twitter. Everybody has a license to express their own opinion. And the phrase that got me is what his brother said. They want to convince him. They say, you got to get out of Galilee. This is too remote. This is not the right place for you to become a public figure. This is what I found out being a professional alone person. It's okay to be alone. I get over a thousand messages every single day. And a lot of people write to me saying, Ralph, I just can't seem to find anybody I can get on with. And I don't like it. It's okay to be alone. The reason why a lot of people experience a lot of loneliness is because they are in resistance to being alone. Because being alone is frightening for the majority of the human race. You gotta be with yourself. You gotta go within. A lot of stuff is gonna come out. That's why a lot of us, we wanna always be with friends. But if you continue just to follow the crowd, you will only go as far as the crowd. When you're at the top, when you're an owner or you're the leader, there's times where you have to do things by yourself. There's no doubt about that. And if you have a problem with that, you're going to have a problem being in a leadership position. Because there's things that you have to do as a leader. You have to lead from the front. You have to work harder. You have to do extra. And if you're not, that's not good. And if you're, if you're working harder, there's going to be times when you're not with anyone else. And you have to be okay with that. 
that's what that expression means it's lonely at the top meaning like you're at the top because you're willing to behave or be a certain way that other people either can oh, or yeah, won't yeah, yeah. right from that perspective you're definitely lonely at the top yeah. there's no one that's going to sit there and do what i'm willing to do to be there like where are you at i don't know haven't seen you If you want any value at all, come harvest. You gotta press, you gotta be bold. The high life is not for the timid and the shy. Some people mistake timidity for humility. Humility is a virtue, timidity is a disease. Humility is almost godlike word. A sense of awe, a sense of wonder, a sense of understanding the distance in worth, an awareness of the human soul, the spirit, something unique about the human drama versus the rest of life a grasp of the distance between us and the stars and yet having the feeling that we're part of the stars it's okay to dream but we must not just become a dreamer be proud but not arrogant it takes pride to win the day it takes pride in company opportunity it takes pride in group organization it takes pride in cause and accomplishment but the key is to be proud without being arrogant if you want the audacity to be successful don't you understand the crap that comes along with that like i wanted the audacity to be in shape it's come with a lot of crap it's been a lot of work you deal with it because it's a very small price to pay for all the phenomenal stuff that you headline read and you aspire to and you dream for. The problem is most of you don't want to eat that shit to get there. Analyze where you are, go into your store. What's in here, what's old, what's decaying, what stinks? Okay, what's that over there? Negative attitude, we gotta get rid of that one. Negative people, we can't hang anymore, you got to go. We can't do this anymore. Fear, come out of there. What's over there in the corner? Procrastination. What's over there? Okay, bad attitude. All that stuff, get out of there. Throw it up. It's good to go. And what do I need? What do I need to get me from where I am to where I need to go? What do I need? Okay, I need more people who dream like me, who think like me, who can stretch and grow like me. I gotta surround myself with more people like that. All right, good. I, I need more confidence here. I need to develop more belief in my ideas and in my, in my plans. I've got to do that. What else do I need to get to where I need to get to? To get to a survival, to live. What, I, what do I need? Okay, I'm going to a new place. I need new skills. So this is what it is, inventory. Throw out what you don't need, add what you need. You must not be faked out when it's nice. You must think storm in the summer and not get faked out. And if you think storm, now you'll look for a rock on which to build your house. Now you're going to be safe. So you can't think nice when it's nice. You've got to think storm when it's nice. The seasons are going to come and change. And if you're not educated to that degree, now you suffer a great loss. Now here's the next philosophy. The time to think positive is when it's negative. Why? Because the negative won't last long. How long is the winter? Isn't that long? Just hang on. It's not going to take that long. How long is the night? It's only a few hours. There's never been a double night. Couldn't you make it a few more hours? And the story says, yes, the, the, the night just can't last for sometimes it seems like it's going to last forever. And when you have insomnia, right, it seems like the night will never pass. But I'm telling you, sure enough, it will pass. So learn to think day when it's night. And then you must learn to think night when it's day. So you had to get it going, get it in before the night came. So this is a good idea now. Learn to think negative when it's positive. Learn to think storm when there is no storm. Learn to think winter in the summer. But then we must learn to think summer in the winter. We can make it through a few more hours, right? A few more days. It won't be that long. Hang in here. The spring will surely come. So the winters of life, learn to express those to other people. Help them understand that as well as to try to understand it yourself. Now here's the next season, the spring. Spring is called opportunity. Not a guarantee. It's guaranteed the spring will come, but it's not a guarantee of a harvest. Here's the key. You must do something with the spring. Take advantage of the spring. Read every book you can get your hands on what to do with the springs of your life. Take advantage of the day, because the day follows the night. 
It's an opportunity now to turn things around. It's an opportunity to have a better one than, than the last one. It's an opportunity for a new beginning, a new spring, a new day, a new beginning. So spring is the, is the chance to take advantage of a, another opportunity. Now, here's what you must do in the spring. It's a very short season usually, you must hurry. You wouldn't ask a farmer to go bowling in the spring. He hasn't got time, why? The season is too short. The planting season is too short. You got to get it done fairly quickly. Now we call spring a window of opportunity. If you have a chance to talk to someone, the window's open. It may not stay open very long, so take advantage. Don't hesitate, meet a new friend. Talk to somebody while the window's open. Now here's the season for everybody to understand because it is so applicable to our life and that's the season of summer. Two things we must do in the summer, nourish our values and protect. Nourish like a mother, protect like a father. The twin challenges in the summertime help to illustrate life, that we are confronted with both good and evil. Here's one of the, the better realistic illustrations and that's health and illness at odds in your body. Illness trying its best to drive health into a small corner and occupy the territory. And health trying what? To push illness into a small corner. There's this contest going on. Who's gonna occupy the territory? If one stays strong, the other's diminished. If the other gains in power, then the other is diminished. So what you must learn to do is cooperate with the positive side of everything in your body and your life. Sometimes we sabotage our own best interest. Because if we get weak, I'm telling you, it moves in, moves in, moves in, takes the territory. So we're in the middle of this contest, and here's what it's called, opposites in conflict. Good, evil, liberty, tyranny, right? Health, illness, winning and losing, right? There's, a, there's the struggle going on. But here's the key. It's the only way, it seems, it's the only way to create a human adventure. It doesn't seem to be any other way currently. It seems like to create an adventure, to create a unique human scenario, we need opposites in conflict. And it's the only way to have a civilized society. And we've got to fight these skirmishes. We've been fighting them forever. We've got to fight them forever. Whether they're inside your own body or whether they're in politics, no matter where they are, we must play this game. We must fight this game. But here's what it creates, a great adventure. Let me give you the ultimate now. Could you win if you couldn't lose? And the answer is no, it doesn't seem like it. You, you couldn't call it winning. You can't win if you couldn't lose. So that's the deal now. Negative, positive. Would there be negative, uh, positive without negative? No, it doesn't seem like it. It seems like this is the current setup, you know, for the foreseeable future. It looks like it's been that way as long as we can remember and as long as the history tells us. So here's what you want to do if you want the adventure. You must learn to play this game to work with all the positive forces to defeat the negative forces as early and as soon and as much as possible. To contain the ravages of disease that want to take you early. You got to fight back. You can't just leave it. Somebody says, well, I got my fingers crossed. Not a good philosophy. You got to take your vitamins. You got to do the stuff. You got to do the deal. Jump on the positive side of whatever you want and see if you can't help out in this warfare and this push shove match. That's the key. So in the summer, here's what you must do. Nourish the plants and the garden. Nourish your values like a mother. Give life. Whatever you start now, you must nourishment and give it life. Don't neglect a new life if you started a new life. What if you said to a brand new mother, where is your baby? She says, I have no idea. You would say, no, that isn't right. If you start a new life, you must care for it. You must protect it. You must give it life, give it nourishment. Now here's the other part. You must protect it like a father. That's why the old wise man said, we must learn to love and hate. And the illustration he used was, you must learn to love good and hate evil. To deal with the weeds in your garden, you got to hate weeds. You got to hate them enough to what? Kill them. You can't say, well, poor weeds. Say, no, this ain't the deal, poor weeds. So, learn the good evil. Now, here's the greatest battle in the mind. Here's what you must not become in the summer in your mind. 
a victim of yourself. What is that insidious voice inside your own head that says you're too short, it'll never work for you, you're too tall, right? It's over for you, right? It's never worked for you before. What gives you any idea that it'll work for you now? You've never been able to rise up and take charge of your life. What makes you think you can do it now? There's gonna to be too many obstacles out there. You'll never overcome them all. What is that insidious voice? It's the same game going on inside your head that's going on in the world. Liberty and tyranny in a push-shove match. And here's what you've got to do. Cooperate with the positive side of your life and let faith drive out doubt, right? Let winning drive out losing. Let positive drive out negative. But you've got to get into the contest. And why get into the contest? Because that's how you create an adventure. There is no other way. It takes both. You've got to learn to laugh, yes, but that's not what the wise men only said. You can't just learn to laugh and keep on laughing. No, that's silly. It says there's also a time to cry. You've got to learn to both laugh and cry. Then it said you must be so sophisticated as not to laugh when it's time to cry. Then it further says you must learn to laugh with those that laugh and learn to cry with those that cry. That now gives you an understanding of what life is all about. Sadness and joy, the contest, the difference. And yet it creates the adventure. But here's the adventure, to overcome the evil, to put evil in its place. Just like in your mind, you've got to stand guard at the door of your mind and see if you can't suppress, see if you can't do battle with the negative forces. Don't become a victim of yourself. Beware of the thief on the street that's after your purse, but also beware of the thief in your mind that's after your promise. And see if you can't engage in this mental contest and win the day. That's the summer. Now here's one more season, and that's the season of harvest. Here's the key to remember harvest time, in due season, in due time when it's time. Part of this is to develop the patience so that when it's time, it will come. But you cannot be impatient. Patience is part of the game here. You can't plant the seed and two, three days later, dig around and say, where's my crop, where's my crop? Say, no, come on, that's foolish. We'll take you away to some safe place. This... You got to plant and wait and exercise patience. And then when it comes time, you give it nourishment and you give it care and you give it protection. And then you got to wait some more and you got to wait some more and you got to wait some more. Need a little pick me up today? Welcome to the new Fresh Motivation app, where you'll find daily motivation, daily quotes. Listen to your favorite speeches in the background or with a black screen. So nothing interrupts your motivational moment where you can create your personal profile, create playlists of your favorite speeches and quotes, add personal notes and start setting goals. Fresh Motivation, the home of motivation. Get it now for free on Google Play.